Hello, hello. I'm back. And today I would very much like to share with you the practice of some gentle yoga poses where you let the pelvis lead. There's also a couple of poses where they're not exactly gentle, but we do them to the best of our ability. And I encourage you, I implore you to listen to your body and to do what it helps you and tells you it needs from you. So let's begin with a minute of sitting in stillness to center ourselves on letting the pelvis lead. It always reminds me, the tingshas, of a call to prayer. And in fact, anytime anything we do to take care of ourselves and to take care of others is a way of praying. So enjoy your prayer. We'll begin, first of all, becoming familiar with the pubic bone, because I don't know about you, but I was never really taught anatomy. I didn't really know my own body until I started taking anatomy classes through my study of yoga. So this is the pelvis, and the pelvis is the pubic bone plus the organs that are in there, but the pubic bone is the is the thickest bone in the human body. Men and women each have a pubic bone. It's shaped a little differently in terms of, well, it has different sizes, of course, and individually how our hip sockets are part of the pubic bone also creates um, the circumstances for how we walk and move because how our hip bones insert into the pelvis affects everything. Everything comes out of the pelvis. And it's one of the reasons why I have become almost obsessive <laughs> about this. Number one, because we don't know it. We never were taught it. Number two, we were taught things, especially as girls, we were taught things to do, ways to stand, ways to walk that were really not healthy for us. And as yoga teachers, we have been taught certain traditional ways to do things that really don't fit many bodies. And so I, I did share my story with you in today's email. Um, so I won't belabor that, but it gives you some insight into where I was coming from, which was pain to no pain. Yay. So we're going to begin lying on our backs. I'm going to shift the camera a little bit. So sorry for the jiggling, but you'll be able to see me better. Okay. So we're going to begin lying on our back with our knees bent. And I just want you to become, to feel more rather than less. Feel how your pelvis 
rests on the mat. Just become aware of the back side of your body and let your attention settle here, but in the back. And notice if your pelvis is level from right to left, left to right, or if one side is perhaps slightly tilted, is there a little bit more or less pressure on one side than the other? Getting curious is huge because there's nothing to judge. You are built, constructed, born the way you were born. Living takes us out of balance. We learn to favor one side over the other. So that changes how we walk, how we move. And we all we want is to become aware so that we can honor that instead of trying to force a round peg into a square hole, or maybe it's a square peg into a round hole. Either way, it doesn't work. So here's where we are. And I invite you when you inhale to tilt the top front of your pelvis, of your pubic bone, up toward the sky. So the belly button side is going up and your butt's going to stay on the ground both ways. So notice when you're here that you have more space between your lower back and the mat. When you next exhale, bring your navel, your belly button in, 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 as though you could touch the floor with your belly button. And you may notice that the lower part of your buttocks lifts up a little bit, but, but your lower back moves toward or even to the mat. So on the inhale, you tilt again, like we did last summer. Just kidding. When you exhale, the belly button comes in, 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 and your lower back goes toward the mat. So I invite you for the next three breaths to follow the rhythm of your breath and your body moving together. Feel the grace that happens when you simply follow your breath and you let the body move. One of my themes for a long, long time has been get out of the way. Because when we listen to the body, when we let it flow the way it's designed to flow, we reduce the number of injuries, we reduce the amount of pain, we heal better, all kinds of things happen. And I know I just kept going because that does feel really good to me. So now just relax back to perhaps where you started or some facsimile thereof and bring your hands behind your head rest your head in your hands let your hands do the work keep your elbows out to the sides when you inhale tilt your pelvis again your pubic bone so that it's the front top is up toward the sky when you exhale Bring your navel in, navel in, navel in, and use your hands to lift your head. And when you inhale, your head comes back down, your pubic bone tilts up. And when you exhale, your pubic bone tilt, the front of your pubic bone tilts down at the top, actually, and you lift your head. But you're lifting your head with your hands, not with the muscles in your neck. And now, once again, I invite you to move with your breath, to feel the grace of your body and of your mind-body connection. Let's cultivate that mind-body connection. And when you finish the one you're on, just pause. Feel your head against the mat once more when your hands come to your sides. Walk your heels in perhaps a little bit closer to your buttocks when you inhale. Tilt the front top of your pubic bone up. Press your feet down. Lift your back off the mat. It doesn't have to go very high. When you exhale, 
tilt the top of your pubic bone back and down. So you're bringing your belly button in and in again. Push your feet down and lower your back to the mat. And notice that when you touch the mat, it's your lower back that touches first and not your buttocks. So inhale, tilt forward and up, press your feet down, lift, exhale, belly button in, 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 press your feet down, lower your back. Do this three more times. Again, letting your breath lead you, and you may have to think about it, and it may get confusing, and you may lose your way, and you may mix up the breath and the movement, it's okay. It's all part of the learning curve. It's all part of the process. It amuses me at the same time that it discourages me. And you can pause when you finish your third one or however many you've done. Just pause right here. But it amuses and discourages me at the same time how we as adults feel like we should learn something instantaneously. We don't give ourselves any space, any grace at all for the learning process to happen. So here's where we begin, right? Turn yourself to your favorite side. Pause here for a breath in and a breath out. Turn your belly button toward the floor and now use your hands to lift you up. Let your head come last. Let me show you something. A lot of times we sit and we're here. I don't know why we default to this, but a lot of us do. Well, I'm inviting you to sit right on your sit bones and now tilt forward so you're actually tilting your the top front of your pubic bone forward and now bring it in 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 and go behind your sit bones oh, look what happened but we're doing this for a purpose and that is to become familiar with how the pelvis moves what it feels at different places so we're just moving back and forth First in front of our pub in front of our tailbone, our sit bones, sorry, and then behind the sit bones. So when you're sitting, either in a chair, and I won't get started on my chair conspiracy, but if you notice, chairs generally have this little scoop, and that doesn't encourage you to sit well. So sit forward in any chair that you're sitting on so that you can sit slightly in front of your sit bones. One of the reasons to use support underneath you is so that you can sit well. Because if you look here, it's really, I mean, I have a lot of openness here and, you know, I've been doing yoga for 25 years. More importantly, that's how I was built. So this may never be accessible to you, which is why we work to find ways to make it so. So you sit on the corner of a cushion, which allows your pelvis to tilt of, with help. And now look, look at my back, look at my chest. I am not telling it to go that way. But this movement of tilting the pubic bone slightly forward means that all of this opens up. My teacher, Judith Lassiter, talks about the spine sitting in the bowl of the pelvis, which I think is such a beautiful image. And when we align the pubic bone appropriately for what we're doing, because it changes, then the spine gets to float right up and out. So when you find the place that fits for your pubic bone, you feel a sense of release and relief. And it doesn't all happen at once because you can't undo 65 years of doing something one way, introducing a new way, although it does happen, 
introducing a new way and expecting it to be perfect the very first time. But never force, never force. So let's come to a standing position. Oh, now you've lost my head. So I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm sorry for the uh, nauseating movement of it. So come to a standing position. And I want you just to pay attention. I invite you to pay attention to your sacrum, the triangular shaped bone at the base of your spine. Oh my gosh, now you can't see my feet. Okay. Feel this. You can even keep your hands back there and bring your feet together. Notice how this feels. It's different for everybody, but maybe there's a little bit more restrictive feeling or maybe something is tighter or maybe it just feels uneasy or maybe it feels comfortable for you. Step your feet a little way apart and notice now how your sacrum feels and your lower back. And step your feet even wider apart and notice how that feels. And now I invite you to go to the place that felt the most comfortable for you. And this is your Tadasana. This is your mountain pose. Relax your hands at your sides and look at your feet and line up the outer edges so they're parallel to each other. That means they draw lines that never intersect. Geometry, it's everywhere. It may feel pigeon-toed. Most of us stand to varying degrees like ducks. Mm -hmm. So this may feel really weird for the first thousand times that you do it, but you're worth the work. Because when we line up the bones, the muscles don't have to work so hard. So in this Tadasana position, I invite you to notice your pubic bone. Without going into a ton of detail, Two things happened in my life. One was that as a girl, I was taught to tuck my tail, oh, that hurts, <laughs> to tuck my tailbone so that I could walk more like a lady. Well, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard now that I've been living life for 65 years because tucking the tailbone actually interferes with my ability to walk like a lady. So forget tucking the tailbone. That was number one. Number two is that in all of my yoga trainings until Judith, in all of my yoga trainings, I was taught to tuck the tailbone in standing positions. And that is absolutely not what the spine needs. The spine needs the very natural curves that come from here and move up. So when we tilt the tailbone I'm sorry, when we tilt the pubic bone so that the belly button side comes forward and a little down, then we make space back here and the sacrum is in a place where it needs to be because the sacrum is not meant to be doing a lot of movement. It's a joint of stability. So mountain, from your mountain, step your left foot forward. Yeah, I know you can't see my feet. <laughs> Step your left foot forward. You don't have to go super far, but enough so that you've got space between you. In my email, I mentioned that I was always taught to line up the front heel with the back arch, and I no longer do that because this feels so much better. Breathe in, and when you exhale, Push your back heel down, bend your front knee. Make sure your knee only goes as far as your ankle and turn your left toes just a teeny bit out and your knee will follow your toes. Inhale your hands over your head for warrior one. Vira Vidrasana one. Vira is Sanskrit and means strength and courage. 
So this is a pose where you embody your courage and your strength. Warrior one. Feel your breath here. Notice where you're bearing the weight on your front foot and see if you can shift the weight so it's no longer at the front part of the foot, but instead is at the front and at the same time at the front of the heel. Breathe in. When you exhale, turn your back foot out. Turn just your upper body to the right for warrior two. Your arms are in a T. Your gaze is over the front middle finger. Without moving your feet, hug your heels toward each other. Feel your strength. Inhale, bring your hands up, shift your back foot and leg forward to face forward. And now as you exhale, bring your hands down and step your left foot back to meet your right. Line up your feet. It's gonna be weird for a while. Let's cultivate weird to find your mountain. Let the top part of your pubic bone tilt forward. Feel the space that you create. Feel how the front of your body lifts up without you telling it what to do and how that opens up the throat, the chest, the shoulders. Be open to the experience. So if it's not if you're not feeling it, if it doesn't feel like it's happening, I invite you to trust the process, to trust your inner knowing that you're moving in the direction of and that it may not be very dramatic for a long time, but you're still feeling the difference. On your next inhale, step your right foot forward. Ah, whoops. Turn your right toes ever so slowly out slightly out. Inhale your hands over your head and when you exhale, press your back heel down and bend your front knee. Check your knee. Make sure that it only goes as far as your ankle and is pointing toward your very gently outturned right foot. Breathe in and out. Feel your strength. Notice the weight on your right foot, your front foot. And when you next exhale, turn your back foot out. Turn just your upper body to the left and come into Virabhadrasana 2, warrior 2. Hug your heels toward each other. Savor your strength. Savor your courage. There's all different kinds of courage. There's all different kinds of strength. So let this be a way for you to access and at the same time embody whatever strength and courage you need in your life. Inhale your arms up, exhale face forward, shifting your back foot so you can do that. And now release your hands down, step your front foot back, find your mountain once more, feel for your pubic bone, let it tilt slightly forward. We're possibly, depending on you, undoing many years of habits. It's okay. We're worth the work. And let yourself breathe here and be. I invite you to come down to the mat. Sit however it's comfortable for you to sit for a few breaths. And then I invite you to lie down on your back so that every time we finish a practice, no matter how short or long it is, we do something to settle, to receive, to integrate all the work we've done. So on your back with your knees bent, walk your feet apart so they're as wide as the mat if you're using one and let your knees come toward each other. If you need to, you can lift your butt up and pull the flesh towards your heels, put it back down. You'll feel a little bit more even and stable and comfortable. And let's just lie here for a minute. 
in the stillness. Now I invite you to walk your feet toward each other, to feel your breath, to turn yourself to your favorite side and pause here, to turn your belly toward the ground and use your hands and arms to lift you so that your head comes up last. I'm going to scoot over here. It is so gratifying to be able to share this practice with you. It has changed so much of how I practice yoga and it has deepened my awareness of how to cultivate access to my deeper energies, if you will. I talk a little bit about that in the PDF that has to do with chakras. I'll talk about that again because it's been such a dramatic, um, wonderful change for me in another video. In the meantime, I send you many blessings always.